This video contains themes and content that some might find disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. I don't know about this man. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back everyone, this is Behind You where Andrew and I compete to tell you the scariest stories that we have made ourselves. This is our second to the last episode, we are one away from our finale. Oh, I am so sad. And that means because it's one more episode. <laughs> Sorry, I know it sounded oh my god, like oh wow, he wow, I'm so sad. Wow. He's so Come on, so, script. He is so, so sad. No, no, no. But legit, like, because it's one more episode, that means uh, we have one more episode to find out who will win mm -hmm. the whole thing. Since this is a competition, we want you to be our judge. At the end of every episode, at the end of this episode, let us know in the comments who won who you think won the episode. Is it me or is it Ade? And in the next episode, we'll announce who won the battle. So the person with the most episode wins will be dubbed Behind You, Ultra Mega Awesome, Really Scary Person. <coughs> and the loser, well, they'll be punished. Dun, dun, dun. All right, so without further ado, let us find out who won the last episode. Andrew, please do your thing. Okay, this time I don't have an I don't have an envelope. I don't think we'll ever <laughs> get an envelope, so I don't care anymore. Uh, I'll just, just do it. Do yeah, the thing. Let's just <laughs> there. That's that's the person who won. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Hey, 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 hey. Ooh. I win. <laughs> Okay, so what is our prompt for today, Andrew? Today, our prompt is older than us. You can't make the prompt about you. Just! <laughs> I don't get it. What are you saying? I don't get what you're trying to say. That's because you're old and you have amnesia. <laughs> what? Who are you? Anyway, go, Andrew. I think you're gonna go first. All right, before we start anything, all right, me and Ade, we didn't have our stories finished. Okay, Ade, I was waiting for Ade to to start saying it, but you know, since he wants to keep it a secret, I I will put everything on the table. We haven't finished any of our stories, so midway through the story, we're going to be improvising the rest, and we will see where it ends. So consider this fourth story round the improv round. <laughs> The old house grew more sinister as Kevin and Carl walked down the hallway. Something about the way that the musty walls loomed over the two felt dangerous. Like at any time, the walls could suddenly trap them, but they moved further. You know, if it wasn't for that butthead, we wouldn't be here, Kevin whined. Why is SpongeBob <laughs> here? <laughs> Why is SpongeBob here? Wait! Let me finish the story. <laughs> okay, okay. Look, he said he was finally gonna leave us alone if we did the dare, Carl replied. Carl was always protective of Kevin. In this case, his protectiveness led them here. A dare to find the amulet that the owner of this house owned. According to the legend, the amulet was cursed. Shh, Kevin stopped walking. Did you hear that? Carl listened carefully. Footsteps. It was probably that butthead following them, waiting to prank them. Oh, it's probably nothing, Carl replies. Under his breath, Carl swears to the gods that if he catches anyone pranking them, he will make their world a living hell. But what if it wasn't? Kevin says. Then we'll just run. They check every room for any sign of an amulet. But every room comes up with nothing. The presence of their best friend gave them courage. But like a puddle on a hot day, it vanishes quickly. 
the more that they go further into the house, the more that they can't shake the feeling that someone is following them. Okay, so here's the improv part. <laughs> uh, are you sure that nobody's following us? I'm sure, man. Look, we just gotta do this dare, and then we'll be on our way, and that butthead is gonna leave us alone. The two continue to make their way through the house. There were only about a few more doors left. Just as they turn the corner, they spot a room with a red door. Oh, oh let's go check that out, Carl says. I don't know, man. It kind of sounds scary. It kind of looks scary from the way that the narrator described it. <laughs> Come on, disembodied voice. <laughs> no, let's go check it out. It's probably in there. All right, you go first. Pause. Is someone having sex in that room? Oh, uh, it's footsteps. <laughs> it's creaking footsteps on a floorboard. You open it. Kevin says. Carl reaches for the doorknob and slowly turns it. <laughs> The room sat a chair. Behind the chair, there was a little round table. And on it, a silver chain with a ruby hanging from it. Look, Carl, it's there. Kevin leads the way into the room and Carl follows suit. Kevin, as Kevin reaches for the amulet, <laughs> The door behind them closes. Ah! <gasps> Both scream in unison. <laughs> Ooh, scary. <clears throat> Carl rushes to the door. <laughs> it's not opening, man. Kevin places the amulet into his pocket, and he joins Carl in trying to open the door. Who dares try to take my amulet? And there's Squidward. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Who oh, there's? Try to take my amulet. The, the two panic, and they thrash on the door harder. Kick it down, kick it down. I'm trying, I'm trying. And just as quickly as it came, the the horror stopped, and the door finally opened. But when the door opened... The fire went out, and they were enveloped in, in darkness, only to be lit up by the moon. Let's get out of here, man. All right, man, let's get out of here. And the two rush out. Rush, rush, run as fast as they can out of the house. So scary. This whole time, it felt like the walls were going to collapse on top of them, crushing them into an oblivion. But... They were safe. It's as if something was protecting them. Mr. Krabs. <laughs> How'd you know? Okay. <laughs> Glad you two boys uh, uh, got, got out. Did you get the amulet? Kevin reaches into his pocket and takes out the amulet. Yeah, I got it right here, man. Now leave us alone. <clears throat> Gladly. He takes the amulet and and his eyes lit up. Now I will be the most powerful person in the world. He puts on the amulet. He starts floating up into the air and tentacles start coming out from behind him. Behind you! Behind you! <laughs> <laughs> and, and the world falls into a green mist. Ooh, come on, Mr. Krabs Octopus Cthulhu. <laughs> I'm glad you understood the reference. Alright, okay. That was Andrew's story. Okay, now I will do my story again. I am also halfway, not even halfway, like a fourth 
or a fifth, I don't know. So not finished, but this is my story and it's titled An Echo. An echo? A ne a neko or an echo? I think he's dead. Why are you uncomfortable with silence? Oh! I was, it was <laughs> before there was you, before there was me, before anything that could move, there was this. Silence. Are you scared of what's there? Or are you scared of what isn't? Are you scared that it'll come for you? When you sit alone in a quiet room, why do you insist on playing music or rustling papers just so you can get that sound in a quiet room why do you why do you conjure up phantoms and ghosts to fill the void is it because you're more afraid of what is really there silence or you have you heard of an anechoic chamber it is a space designed to be completely devoid of sound. For humans, the closest you have is at the Orfield Laboratories at Minnesota. Numerically, their, an an their anechoic chamber is silent enough that, re that it reaches negative 9.4 decibels. Physiologically, it's silent enough for some humans to go insane just at the 45-minute mark. Hmm, that seems a little long, but I think that'll do. Why don't you try? You walk into the room, walls lined with soundproofing pads. It's odd because you've been to a soundproofed room, but this one is a lot more intense. There are jagged triangles jutting out from all the walls. Black in color almost terrifying to look at almost unnerving to touch the floor is just a wire mesh suspending you in this black box filled with spikes of soundproofing and it's already oppressive it doesn't make sense because all there is is silence and yet you feel there is this pressure pushing on you as if your presence is not welcomed in this silence now scientifically speaking it could be because when you're in a room you tend to hear an echo you tend to hear the reverberation of, in the, of the space in the room, giving you a sense of how big things are or how open they are. However, here in this room, there is no echo. There is no reverberation. Just complete and utter silence. So you could say it's almost as if you're buried in it. You're just suspended in silence. Let's close the door and close the lights. You close the door, you close the lights, and let's start the timer now. First one minute, everything's fine. It just feels really dark. It just feels really uncomfortable. You just kind of sit there, you just kind of wait. And then around the two minute mark, you start to realize you're the one actively making sound because it's just uncomfortable doing nothing. 
you ruffle your clothes, you lick your lips, smack your tongue. And maybe around the four minute mark, you start to hear your breathing. The friction of air. Yes, the friction of air coming in. The friction of air going out. And now you can't seem to get that breathing out of your mind. Now you're vaguely conscious of your own breathing and now you have to do it manually. And now you're annoyed. So now you wait for more things to do, but there's nothing. But then you realize, as you were so focused on your breathing, how long has time passed? Now, it starts this faint ringing in your ears. It's almost so high-pitched, you swear, maybe that one singular sound is the sound that dogs hear. And for some reason, now you hear it. Which is impossible because you're in a silent room. It's impossible because there is no other sound but you. And then you start to realize that ringing is your blood pumping in your ear. That could also be. And then you realize... You can hear your own heartbeat. And you realize this is very uncomfortable. This is not something someone should be doing on a regular basis. We are supposed to breathe and have our heart beating without being conscious. Now you have to focus on your heart beating and your breathing at the same time. All because there is just pure silence. You swear it's around 30 minutes or so. And you start to sweat. You start to sweat because it's so hot. It's hot and it's dark. Wh why are you here? You are literally just in a room with complete silence. What is the goal? Why am I waiting? And for some reason, you are determined to stay longer because you say to yourself, I can do it. I can last longer than 45 minutes. Just a few more. Just a few more minutes. Just a few more seconds. Only, and this is what I'm going to break the ice. It's only been 10 minutes, not 30. So keep waiting, you keep waiting, and then you start feeling dizzy. See, scientifically speaking, sound is more than just giving you uh, information about what is being said or what is in the room. It also gives you a sense of space and dimension, of balance. How are you sh so sure that you are standing on solid ground if you do not hear the reverberation of echo on the ground. So you start feeling dizzy. You start feeling like you are swaying in a boat left and right. And you swear you have to hold on to something. You swear there is an earthquake happening under your feet. It's just silence. And now you stare at the face of that one thing that has been here the whole time, that has been here longer than anything in this universe, anything in this earth. Just silence. And maybe, just maybe, the silence is offended by you, by the mere fact 
that you are the sound. You are just offending the silence. You can't even stand this silence itself. You are just laughing it off. You are just trying to fill the void. Trying to put on that veil for so you can't see the pure terror of silence. The pure, the pure terror that is you. The silence only exists so that you can hear yourself. So you can feel that fear of what it means to be a sound. What it means to disturb this very peaceful silence. Your presence in silence is offensive. And you say, I've had enough. I'm done. I don't give a shit. I'm out of here. Only to realize you don't know where the door is. And now you just laugh it off. Because now it comes out. Now the veil is off. You have lost your sanity. And that is my story! Boom! <laughs> I love that. He's like, oh shit, where's the door? <laughs> like, in, that is my story! In, in, in darkness, I'm like, oh fuck. I forgot where the door was. <laughs> also, I legit, I, I legit thought you disconnected at the start. Cause I was like, "Fuck! Ugh. Oh well, I guess I, I guess I have to do something to be entertaining." You better keep that in. I want that whole stretch of silence when you're just babbling. Well, congratulations, um, for you know being a very stupid human being and just like locking yourself in, like a chamber that nobody could hear you in. At least mine, everybody got out and everyone was safe. It's just that the world, you know, got threw into a like uh, eldritch horror darkness thing <laughs> so who do you think won this battle was it me or was it ade let us know in the comments and you have until next thursday to submit your stories thanks for watching <laughs> and <laughs> you stole my life i know <laughs> bitch I was gonna... so thank you for watching the fourth episode and hey whatever you do don't look behind you <laughs>